Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we continue with our arriving Mars missions. We brought five into orbit around Mars in the previous episode and we have five left. Beginning with this, Mars Base 1. So we, we've got Mars Base 1, UDMH Depot, two light landers and finally a Mars Port 1. And then we'll have brought them all into orbit. And then the fun begins because we have to talk about landing. As you can see, this is obviously configured for landing with the struts and the parachutes and everything. And that's going to be an interesting task all on its own. Now with Mars Base 1, if the Kerbals can get to it, if they land at a location close enough to it to actually inhabit it, then it could increase the duration of their stay on Mars. And that's because it's got food, water, and oxygen here, whereas the lander pod does not have that much. Um, this is assuming a lot of things go well. I may only have one Kerbal actually try and land on Mars just so that we can potentially bring one back safely if all sorts of things go wrong with the landing. I'll have to think about that. Uh, you can maybe even give me your suggestions. But uh, for now, our focus is bringing these things into orbit. And here, it's got a little uh, tank here, so uh, we don't have the correct mass down there, but we're talking about around 16.5 to 17 tons, let's say around there. And the heat shield is a 4 meter heat shield according to this, though I don't remember if I tweak scaled it up. It's possible. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I hope it's a 4 meter heat shield, because that'll make this uh, a lot more predictable. I really, uh, at this point, I really wish I consistently did not tweak scale heat shields because it'd be a lot easier to tell what altitude I should aim for because I could just right click on it and see there, but I can't. So here we are. Unfortunately we do have the full ablator on it, which is not really the most necessary thing. It is staged, so that's going to be important for landing. I don't know if uh, this is the post heat shield mass or pre heat shield mass. Well, well, we'll see once we get rid of this. Anyway, initially I think we're going to aim for 42 kilometers as our periapsis and then we'll see what else we need to do. So, um, let me just turn on RCS and uh, lift that periapsis up to what we want. And then we'll have to revisit this at some other time. Because in 13 hours we have to deal with uh, UDMH Depot. So I'm going to add a maneuver in two days before it actually uh, gets close to Mars. And maybe we should take a look at where it is in terms of inclination. Does it seem like it's in the same orbit? It seems a little bit high. You can see the thick belt of our existing missions down there. So perhaps we should deflect a little bit lower. Okay, don't chase the node. That seems to be good enough. And But now our periapsis is off, so let's just adjust that a bit. Okay, that's good enough, I think. This does have... Well, I don't. I certainly don't want to use any of this fuel in order to bring our orbit down. It will just land where it lands. It's more a test article anyway. The last time we tried to land one of these Mars Base 1s, it failed miserably, so... Yeah, maybe it'll work better this time, maybe it won't, but we'll pay attention to it right there. So, there we go. And next, the UDMH Depot. Alright, so here's the UDMH Depot. Unfortunately, this episode, like the previous one, is going to involve a bit of jumping around between craft. And that's unavoidable because, well, if things go wrong at any point during all of this, uh, there will be explosions. So, I don't want you to miss out on that. Uh, so, here's UDMH Depot's approach, and it seems to be reasonably in line with everything else. Except, uh, we could be a little bit closer in... Here too we have a fair, uh, fairly light payload, it's 18 tons, it's just like the previous one basically, 
the Mars Port 1 and it's on a 4 meter heat shield so I'm just going to take it to a 42 kilometer periapsis. We are entering slower than the previous missions so we're only at 2668 compared to the previous UDMH depot which actually entered the SOI at 2863 so this is a lot slower which means that it should be captured into a tighter orbit but how much tighter I don't know that's 42 kilometers which is the same altitude we aimed for with the other UDMH depot so we should get a good comparison and I'm gonna jot down the information so that I don't forget but there we are so after this I'll make a little node and then we'll jump to the light lander there alright so this light lander has just entered Mars SOI and we've got a little bit of a blater here I think this is properly configured and we're we're basically at the right periapsis 48 kilometers seems good uh, we've got a f 5 meter heat shield assuming that this is stating it correctly 5 meter heat shield and you know it occurs to me this this 5 meter heat shield has less total ablation than the 4 meter heat shield for Mars Base 1 which means that that one is probably tweak scaled well that's gonna complicate matters anyway but this we'll, we'll say it's a 5 meter heat shield hopefully this isn't tweaked down and it's only 11 tons so we're, we need to be pretty high and we'll try this at uh, its current 49 kilometers I think is fair uh, the other light lander was aimed at 50 kilometers and we'll see how each one does a uh, little bit different but yeah I don't know uh, we, uh, based on how the other one does the other one is going to be approaching the atmosphere in 10 hours I think uh, we might adjust this one further but right now this seems to be fine and we'll just add a little node as it gets close so that's the new alarm there okay let's go to the other light lander which should be further along Ah, no, this isn't uh, for long at all. This one is further away, it looks like. This one is still out of the SOI. But it also doesn't have a blader. So, yeah, this is, this is all bad. This is going to have to manually capture around Mars and not use the heat shield because it doesn't have any ablator. Okay, so that's a different sort of situation. We've already got an adjustment plotted, it looks like which means it probably wasn't on the right course okay looks like our adjustment brings us outside of the atmosphere as you might expect I would also like to be in the same plane as everything else and right now this approach does not seem to do that for us okay I'll take that and yeah so this is going to have to manually capture manually capture and it's got enough fuel but it's not gonna have enough fuel to do many other things after that uh, we'll probably have to capture into a loose orbit and then maybe try and finagle a Phobos thing I don't know we'll see about how this works out so it's a direct maneuver to capture that's 700 right there but that puts us into too long an orbit well I don't know a three-day orbit because um, the maneuver is in two day, well, three days to Apoapsis, six day orbit. It's not too bad. It's because we're going so slow already. 730 meters per second to capture is pretty good, actually. Maybe, maybe it's not such a bad deal. Okay, so let's add that alarm. Let me uh, take a look at the other light lander again, and maybe we should aim a little bit higher maybe 50 kilometers it's better to do that now than later the closer we get to Mars the hotter that burn is going to be okay that adjustment is done now it's time for Mars Base 1 to do its entry okay folks here goes arrival number six you can see our other missions Ares Pod A there Ares Pod G oh um yep that was quite a high orbit we captured into for Ares Pod A 
going to have to do something about that. But anyway, for now. So yeah, the ablator, we definitely have more ablator on this supposedly 4 meter heat shield than we had on the 5 meter one, which makes me think that this is bigger than 5 meters. But what do I do about that now? I suppose, I mean, if we end up landing, we're just going to end up landing. Okay, that's just food, water, and oxygen. That's also food, water, and oxygen. Lots of food, water, and oxygen here. And I guess this is going to have to go, even though it'd be nice to make use of that fuel some other way. Next time I should just have a controller and a docking port on it or something. Anyway. Yep, off it goes. And we can retract the panels now. Entry velocity does not seem like it's going to be much different from the others, even though our SOI entry velocity was much lower. Obviously it would have been better to carry less ablator, but we do have a full heat shield right now. Well, it's looking a bit low, we'll see. It's certainly lower than the three hour orbits that we've had on some of our previous missions. Okay, we're at 80 kilometers and the apoapsis is now in three digits. As far as kilometers are concerned, the periapsis is getting fairly low, so we're going to have to boost that up. We do have 611 meters per second to work with, so it should be all right. And at least we're not crashing directly into the surface, so we can plan a little bit better and get the numbers for the landing so that perhaps we can imitate it with the Ares pod A, or sorry, Ares pod G, which is the lander. And if we can imitate it, then maybe we can land close to it. Only two things need to be landed on the surface, really. This and Ares pod G. Okay, our exit velocity is much lower than for any other mission so far, 3,441 meters per second, and our orbit was 916 kilometers by 24.7, and it's a two-hour orbit. So that's about as tight as you would want it to be. Yep, that's pretty dangerous. Okay, uh, prograde. Oh, we're already retrograde. We're closer to it. Let's get the panels out. And boost our periapsis. Okay, we are now in a nice stable orbit, and it just occurred to me, maybe it would be better to land the crew down to the surface first, and then land this, and try and get this close to the crew then. Um, that might be a better thing to do, because obviously we're not risking any, any body with this. And yeah, that might be the way to go. Anyway, this is firmly in orbit, and we can ignore it for now. Let's turn to the UDMH depot. Okay, folks, here we go again. UDMH depot time. Yep, uh, what's that skirting by there? Must be either Fumble Sedemos, right? There's this little moon right there. Okay, focus. The previous UDMH depot entered on a high Mars orbit, a one-day orbit. This one we are hoping for a somewhat lower orbit, but we're keeping it safe still, since it has a lot of delta V on its own and can easily use that to make rendezvous and everything. We could even use one to tug the Ares pod A into a lower orbit if we wanted to, but Aries body is pretty darn heavy, so perhaps having it do a second pass into the atmosphere would be a good idea, depending on how you look at that. I might want to do a test to see what the best way to handle that is. We could just do multiple passes at a high altitude, that sort of thing. I mean, overall, the entries that we've been doing, when we go into the atmosphere, we lose about 1,600 to... Uh, well, at most like 1,600, maybe 1,000 to 1,600 meters per second. Aries pod A is really, really heavy. 
so we would probably lose less than that and that's at a 40 kilometer periapsis so if we aim higher we should lose less this is all theory okay approaching periapsis hoping for a periapsis around 4700 meters per second so far the only design issue we've had is Ares pod A's tendency to want to flip around otherwise they've been alright well we are going faster than I wanted but we have captured okay exit velocity was 4342 meters per second and the orbit we've ended up in is lower than the other UDMH depots, so that's nice as the game is trying to figure this all out. We are at 16,160 by 39.8, and that's a 10 hour and 22 minute orbit. So, okay, well, 7 out of 10 in orbit around Mars. Let's make sure it's in a stable orbit though. We still got. Let's not forget in any of these situations when we've got a periapsis that's technically still in the atmosphere. We need to make sure everything is really safely in orbit. Look at all these missions. It's like very, very populated around here now. Okay, off it goes. And this is ready for action. Might as well use an ignition. The engines are more efficient than the RCS anyway. Okay, 200 kilometers or so, and this is in a good orbit. All right, and on to one of the light landers. Okay, so here we are, and the thing with the light landers is that they are light, and they're sitting on a fairly large heat shield, and we are bringing them in higher than any of the other missions at 50 kilometers so hopefully this is the right number but I'm not a hundred percent sure let's find out okay we should be able to oh boy the electric charge uh oh what why is the electric charge not recharging uh, we've got a problem well, now we're facing the sun, but it doesn't seem like we're uh, getting enough charge. See, now, if if the Agena is in hibernation mode, or anything's in hi hibernation mode, could I, like, toggle power here? No, probably not. Hmm, we may have a flaw here. It's not a flaw that's going to prevent us from actually getting into orbit, though. Well, okay, maybe it's got getting worse. Because now persistent rotation says the vessel is not controllable. See, the thing is, we were supposed to have two solar panels. And we only have one. This was supposed to be placed in symmetry and there was supposed to be another one here. It wasn't supposed to be just one of these. So now... We have a problem. Oh, so I'm not entirely sure with the Delta Avionics, but we, we really didn't need both the Delta Avionics unit here and the Agena Avionics package, did we? That's really unnecessary. Well, Mechjeb can hold this, can't it? It can. So I'm, I'm not going to care, we're just going to try and capture anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> cheats! Okay, well... In this case, Mechjeb really is cheating. But, oh, I, I do get a little bit of electric charge when I time warp, but I quickly lose it. Okay, retract. Uh, well, now I those are gonna be destroyed. But po potentially we can just rendezvous a UDMH depot with it, and that will be able to supply the power. Hopefully. We could also jettison this Delta Avionics unit, actually. We'll lose some of our Delta V, though. Okay, approaching periapsis. Uh, we did not lose our solar panels. 
and we hit about 4,850 meters per second at periapsis and we have captured and we should be in a serviceable orbit by the time we get out of the atmosphere so 50 kilometers was fine depending on exactly where you want to be of course and yeah solar panels resilient to the atmosphere of Mars at this velocity interesting to note maybe important consumer information I don't know if we can ever get uh, any power in this without docking something to it I don't know if we can even jettison the heat shield at any point now especially since we retracted the, the main one the main heat shield, uh, the main solar panel. Okay, 4,311 on exit. And the orbit was 14,552 by 47.9 kilometers, 9 hours and 18 minutes. So, can we get into a stable orbit? That's the tricky part. I mean, I guess technically I can run the RCS uh, even without power, can I? Or maybe not. No, it doesn't look like I can. Smart ASS can run the RCS, but I can't. Well, I don't see a legitimate way of saving this. I guess we're going to have to see if we can do something with the other light lander, but this one is basically junk at this point. I really shouldn't have retracted that solar panel in retrospect. Yep. I didn't know that these would survive. Okay, well on the bright side, this one still has electric charge. First of all, let's ditch the heat shield, which we can't use anyway. And I was hoping that this would go with it. Okay. Um, oh, this one has two solar panels in the right place. That's interesting. This one didn't have the heat shield uh, with the blader on it, but it does have two solar panels. And can it recharge? Well, let's see. Down, execute. It doesn't have solar panels on the bottom bit. It also doesn't have the the avionics core on the bottom bit, I notice. Which means it consumes less power. Still not great on the power consumption and production. But at least it's in the positive. And while we time warp, I think the Delta, uh, Agena Avionics package can power down. I, I wish we could toggle power on this and have it take less power. I don't need the avionics in the pod. And we are aiming for a high orbit anyway, so we're not going to be obstructed by Mars for too long on each orbit. Okay, well maybe we'll get this one right. Or right-ish. Okay, and shouldn't take too long for these engines to bring us into orbit. What's the burn time? 7 minutes and 57 seconds, but that's for the full amount. I hope pressing spacebar doesn't decouple anything. Okay, good. Okay, make an orbit. Too bad they don't have fuel flow priority in this version, otherwise obviously that tank should have the higher priority. I'll wait until we're finished with the burn before pumping the fuel up. Okay, we have captured. And I'll get it into a one day orbit, I think that's fine. Okay, not a Martian day, but a day-ish. And we are in orbit with 2,903 meters per second left, which may be enough to do like a Phobos and Deimos landing, I'm not sure. It's actually lower than Ares Pod A or Ares Pod G right now. Pretty close to UDMH Depot. Alright, so that leaves one last one, Mars Port 1. And this I don't have to worry about the periapsis on because it's already fine. And even right now, close to Mars, if we time warp... Uh, let's make sure that we're oriented properly with respect to the Sun and persistent rotation is on as the game is trying to sort itself out. Okay, there we go. Power is going to be dicey in all this. 
any way you look at it. Okay, so turn that off. Okay. And yeah, we are recharging. And that's good. Okay. Marsport 1. Well, I guess it's Marsport 2 unless we combine the two Marsport 1s into a bigger Marsport 1. Whatever it is, it's arriving. Okay, well this Marsport 1 is in Mars SOI, but it sure seems like it's going to end up really far away from Mars. I don't quite understand this. Um, I, I don't know what this 14 meters per second was supposed to do. Obviously, something has gone horribly wrong with the calculation of this orbit. It's ended up way over here instead of close by. Was this the one that we did a correction with um, in solar SOI? Because maybe that didn't need to be done and the game was just messing with me. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't think I can just radially... No, obviously I can't just radially do that. And what if we try and make orbit by just manually I mean of course we have a heat shield and we weren't trying to manually make orbit I guess it's possible um, no not really 2000 so yeah something went wrong with this Marsport 1 well I certainly don't see any way of dealing with Marsport 1 anytime soon and I don't think trying to do any maneuver in here is going to help so I'm just going to put a pay attention to this later sort of maneuver. Um, not that much later. I would really like it to be... Yeah, uh, maybe a couple of weeks kind of thing. 60... Yeah, maybe around there. And we'll pay attention to it then. But for now, I, I don't need to worry about it because it doesn't look like we can get into orbit around Mars. I don't know what happened to it. I don't really understand. But maybe we can finagle something. Maybe it's going to be adrift for a very long time in the meanwhile. But let's just focus on the eight missions that we actually did properly. <laughs> it looks like uh, that's what we've got. Eight out of ten. I was so hoping for ten out of ten but we got eight. And right now, I think the most constructive thing would be to, if we could aero break Aries Pod A a couple more times at a higher altitude, uh, to bring its orbit down to something a little bit more decent and compatible with the other missions, that would be the best thing to do right now. On reflection, it sort of makes sense that our failures will be backloaded because the ones that arrived last were the ones that were launched first. And the ones that arrived first were the ones that were launched last, and so those were the ones that everything had been fixed up for. We had done some edits, and so, yeah, but still, the odd trajectory of Marsport 1, the second Marsport 1, the one that is just coasting on through Mars SOI without stopping, is still annoying me. But let's try some arrow breaking passes with this. I don't have trajectories that might have helped or might have misled me, but I'm just going to bring it to... Uh, thankfully we didn't get to a very high periapsis here, so that's good. I'm going to go orbit retrograde, RFS on, and we'll bring it to 90 kilometers for a start. That probably won't do too much. But I also don't want it flipping around or anything. Ultimately, I'll have to take a look at all the all the orbits that everything is in and the uh, fuel budgets for each part of the mission and then decide what exactly we want to do, how we're going to have them all meet up. Who does the rendezvous rendezvousing with who kind of thing. Well, we don't really need our alarm clock up now anymore, well, at least for the time being. Okay, let's go with that, and then back pointing at the sun. So we'll have to readjust that periapsis a bit. Yeah, it's going to bother us about Moonport 1 
let me just double check all that I mean when it says stuff is running out we've got about 120 days left there spaceport 2 is in need of some food well after 132 days I think we can do stuff here just fine for the time being and we are poised for entry I don't know I guess I could shift the uh, what fuel I can down that would help us not being flippy alright we've encountered the atmosphere and let's take a look at how much it affects our orbital period and speed in order to when we're passing through this shallow okay yeah not much effect from this we still haven't stopped going up in velocity and we're approaching 90 kilometers still we probably will have ended up cutting three hours off of our orbit oh shoot I uh, neglected electric charge on the way out that's not good okay and let's execute and let's extend panels while we can while we still can from what we've seen I could probably just leave the solar panels out while passing through the atmosphere but that might be a little bit dangerous this is still our only crew return vehicle here but yeah the solar panels on the other mission the light lander did survive I'm gonna take it to 70 kilometers I think okay 70 kilometer periapsis and we're hoping it doesn't suck us to the surface I doubt that but you know I, I don't have a little uh, chart telling me what else do we good for this that's a whole different kind of testing although it should be easier to figure out actually to be honest this is actually easier to figure out than the whole capture scenario because we're not dealing with different entry orbits we're dealing with fairly standard orbits around Mars well not only does this seem still a fairly safe periapsis but it's not using any pitch yaw and roll this time it's not trying to flip over or anything and maybe it's because we shifted some fuel down and some food water and oxygen down but I don't know maybe it's just not in that part of the atmosphere still I think I'll do one more pass at this periapsis and then we'll call it a day for now oh no no let me do the solar panels geez Okay, now it's depleting because we're on the nighttime side, but by how much will we completely deplete? Not quite, but it's getting close. Okay, once again, entering the atmosphere of Mars. Okay, we are approaching periapsis. And at least our oral period is down to one day, and it will be below one day, so we'll be below the orbit of the Ares Pod G, um, the, that light lander there, the UDMH depot there. But we, we might need a few more passes, but I think I'll probably put it into a parking orbit for now until I can reassess. It might be good to keep it uh, closer to this orbit so it's easier to rendezvous with those pieces though. Really the most important thing to rendezvous with is probably the station. They need some more room to stretch out. And the station is all the way down here, Marsport 1. As far as fuel margins are concerned we're pretty good, right? It takes about 2,100 to get back and we've got 500 extra so if we want to park and then once again dip into the atmosphere we can continue to do that but basically this is our situation we've got Mars base 1 in a very tight orbit 
awaiting to land. That's the surface outpost. Mars Port 1, the station, a little bit higher up. Ares Pod G. I forget which Ares Pod G is the good Ares Pod G. There's one that can land and one that cannot. Um, I'm hoping that's the one that can land. So that's actually probably the one that we need to get to. So these are the two missions we need to get to. You know, maybe I should pass through the atmosphere just one more time. Looking at it. Anyway, before I forget, uh, we need to put the solar panels back out and reorient to the sun. Will passing through one more time be one time too many? I don't think so. So, okay, one, one more time because we are obviously too high up. We are at the Ares Pod G Light Lander UDMH Depot level. And then there's uh, another light lander, UDMH depot level here. And then there's the missions that we actually want to rendezvous with down there. Yeah, that's another thing. If we do rendezvous with the station, the electric charge issue is no problem. Because the station's solar panels can power it. Okay, at periapsis, we're down to an 18-hour orbit. So not a huge difference. We're still nowhere near even the mid-level, if you will. I mean, the question is, it's not bad to have it in a high orbit if it turns out that this is the direction we need to eject back towards Earth at, you know. I mean, if, uh, if the periapsis is where the maneuver is going to happen. If the apoapsis is where the maneuver to return to Earth has to happen, then this is horrible. So, and then we'd have to get into a much lower orbit to make that work out. Fortunately, we don't have to decouple this heat shield, so any time we want, we can still uh, aerobrake again into a lower orbit. We never have to use our fuel here in order to aerobrake. So that's a, that's a significant plus side. And keeping that in mind, I would rather not rush, as the game is trying to figure things out, I would not rather not rush on it, and I need to work out the details on how we're going to rendezvous everything together. I mean, maybe it's not a bad thing to have this in the middle and start rendezvousing, but then again, this can air break into a lower orbit, but if it attaches to some of these other missions, that's not going to work out quite right. So that's the question mark. Anyway, solar panels back out. And I do want to see what the power situation is at this orbit. So, as we see it go into the nighttime side of Mars, how much electric charge depletes? Uh, well, no, it did not fully deplete, so it's still okay. In fact, it seems better off than in the previous orbit. Not sure, though. Maybe I was quicker to extend the solar panels or something. Okay, I'm going to restore us to a stable orbit, and then we'll call it a day. So, uh, 8 out of 10 is basically what we've got here as far as making orbit around Mars. Now, can we do all the other things? Can we land a Kerbal on Phobos and Deimos and land a Kerbal on Mars and return them all safely back home? Well, that's going to take some more doing and I would like to take some time on that to figure out exactly, based on what orbits they all captured in, exactly how to get them all together. And so I will do that between this episode and the next. And I think we can handle all the relevant operations before we have to resupply Moonport 1. But I'll have to see about that. I'll give us a month, 30 days, uh, to handle the operations here and then maybe we can turn back. If we take a look at our alarms, technically we've got 380 days to to do all the missions before we have to return home. But I'm gonna say 30 days until we have to handle the resupply missions at least. And also we've got this Jupiter low orbit uh, maneuver. And we've also got some Venus port ones to take care of all around 40 days. Plus, we should turn to something else after another 30 days or so. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that it's out of the atmosphere. So, let's say 130 kilometers. 
and we still have 2600 meters per second here we used about 8 meters per second just boosting our orbit right there and it is still focused on the sun and recharging so with that being our situation thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time